Hi, thank you for watching Digging to China. I'm Dong Xiong. If you have not done so already, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much. On September 27, Bloomberg reported that Xu Jiaying, the heavily indebted chairman of China's property developer Evergrande Group, had been placed under house arrest, further intensifying pressure on the company from its creditors. The following day, Evergrande Group issued an announcement confirming that its chairman Xu Jiaying had been subjected to compulsory measures on suspicion of illegal activities. Evergrande did not provide further details, but it became evident that Xu Jiaying had indeed lost his personal freedom, and his second son had also been taken into custody. This move by Beijing authorities has sparked considerable speculation and a discussion in public discourse. Over the past few weeks, the arrest of Xu Jiaying and his son has been taking center stage on social media. This event, emblematic of China's political economic landscape, has captured the interest of an analyst who are offering various interpretations from different angles. Following the arrest, there has been growing speculation about the fate of Evergrande's staggering inventory of 1.62 million unfinished properties. These properties, often referred to as a Lan Wei Lo in Chinese, represent situations where buyers have paid the full purchase price, yet the properties remain incomplete or inhabitable. The sheer scale of these 1.62 million properties involved around 6 million property owners, making it an unprecedented challenge for any real estate developer. This raises the pressing question, what options are available to these property owners? Chinese and international media outlets, including the UK's BBC, share a common analyst, analysis that suggests the Chinese Communist Party may intervene comprehensively to address the Evergrande crisis in the wake of Xu Jiaying's arrest. Many are drawing comparisons between the Chinese government's handling of HNA Group and Mbang Group and what may lie ahead for Evergrande. In the case of Mbang, following the arrest of its chairman Wu Xiaohui, a special working group was dispatched to oversee the debt restructuring process. They took decisive measures to eliminate Wu Xiaohui's ownership stake as well as those of his associated parties, ultimately bringing the assets back under state control. HNA Group underwent a similar process when its top leadership faced legal action, leading to a debt restructuring supervised by the government. It is widely anticipated that Evergrande will follow a similar trajectory, with the Chinese Communist Party taking the reins of crisis management to align with its objectives. This perspective is widely shared among both Chinese and international observers, indicating that Evergrande's resolution is likely to resemble that of Ambang at HNA. Next, we need to gain a detailed understanding of the specific steps taken in the case of Ambang at HNA. By examining the exact sequence of events, we can then evaluate whether the CCP can effectively adopt a comparable approach in addressing the Evergrande situation. In May 2018, the CCP detained Wu Xiaohui, chairman and CEO of Mbang Group, sentencing him to 18 years in prison and confiscating assets worth 10.5 billion yuan. Before Wu Xiaohui's trial, the China Insurance Regulatory Commission issued a public statement citing Mbang Group's violation of insurance regulations as the reason for its takeover. This violation posed a significant threat to the company's ability to meet its financial obligations. After two years of government intervention, the China Banking and Insurance Regulatory Commission announced the restructuring of Mbang Group into Da Jia Insurance Group Limited. The company continued its operations, but ownership shifted to the state. Unlike Evergrande, Mbang did not have a multitude of unfinished housing projects, nor did it leave millions of homeowners without their properties. All of Mbang Group's insurance products were transferred to the state-owned Daja Insurance Group, and its assets became state-owned. Moreover, Mbang Group's president Wu Xiaohui did not engage in large-scale capital flight. The majority of his funds remained within China. This outlines the approach taken during the Mbang case. 
Next, let's delve into how HNA Group was managed. In February 2020, a joint working group was formed in Hainan province, tasked with overseeing HNA Group. This working group exercised rigorous control over the company, taking charges of its assets, debt restructuring, and overall business decisions. The group orchestrated the separation of HNA Group's core businesses, debt restructuring, and asset transfers. Similar to Mbang, HNA Group did not have a multitude of unfinished housing projects, nor did it leave millions of homeowners unable to obtain their properties. In reality, the Evergrande debt crisis isn't a recent development. It began to unfold in July 2021, which was two years ago. How did the Chinese Communist Party address the Evergrande situation at that time? On December 3rd, 2021, the Guangdong provincial government announced the formation of a task force to intervene in Evergrande. At that time, the Guangdong provincial government stated that they had dispatched the task force in response to Evergrande's request. So what has this task force, which has been in Guangdong province for the past two years, accomplished? Unlike the previous task forces sent by the CCP to HNA and Mbang, the Guangdong provincial task force emphasized allowing Evergrande to manage its operations independently. The task force played a role in coordinating and supervising rather than controlling Evergrande. It provided support and assistance, helping to address any requests or issues that Evergrande had. It was within this framework of support and assistance that Xu Jiaying further executed his capital outflow strategies. He and his wife executed a technical divorce and sought protection through the bankruptcy courts in the United States for bankruptcy bankruptcy restructuring, aiming to safeguard his existing assets. In this context, the role of the Evergrande task force seems rather unusual. There is a widely circulated rumor in China regarding Evergrande's rapid expansion coinciding with Xi Jinping's rise to power. In 2008, when Evergrande faced near bankruptcy, it appeared that New World Group was the savior. However, behind the scenes, it was believed to be the influence of former Premier Wen Jiabao, which included the involvement of his brother in Evergrande. By 2012, as Xi Jinping assumed the presidency, the one family's ties with Evergrande diminished. Consequently, Evergrande's substantial growth and transformation into a Chinese corporate giant occurred primarily after Xi Jinping assumed the office, commencing around the end of 2012. So why did Evergrande flourish under Xi Jinping's leadership while companies like HNA, Mbang, and even Wen Dai first challenges or setback? Recent discussions on Chinese social media suggest that the Xu Jiaying has established a new influential connection, Deng Jiagui, who happens to be Xi Jinping's brother-in-law. Since 2013, China's state-owned banks injected over 1 trillion yuan in loans into Evergrande. This can be seen as Evergrande enjoying support from Xi Jinping's family. It also helps us understand why, after the Evergrande debt crisis emerged, the Supreme People's Court of China issued an order prohibiting all courts in the country from accepting debt collection lawsuits against Evergrande. How could Evergrande receive such protection if not for Xi Jinping's backing? The Supreme People's Court wouldn't have made such a decision without Xi Jinping's support, even though this decision appears blatantly illegal. Now we can also comprehend why, even after the Guangdong Provincial Working Group was established, Xu Jiaying could act with impunity. This is because Xi Jinping's family interests had to be withdrawn first, and Deng Jiagui needed time to move his assets. Once Xi Jinping's family interests are all withdrawn, they can now deal with Xu Jiaying. This perspective appears to be more logically consistent. With the arrest of Xu Jiaying, the CCP is essentially taking responsibility for Evergrande's troubles. Why would they do this? There are two primary reasons. 
One reason behind this is the existence of 1.62 million incomplete properties and over 6 million affected homeowners, which presents a risk to social stability. The Chinese Communist Party had no choice but to intervene to prevent the public from discovering that the powerful individuals were profiting from these properties. Hence, the government's intervention serves not only to maintain stability but also to conceal these matters. Consequently, Xu Jiaying is unlikely to experience a positive outcome as he may not have his freedom and even his life could be in jeopardy. The author of the Red Roulette, Desmond de Shum, has previously exposed Xu Jiaying as someone who would bow to any influential figure and align himself with those who could bring him advantages. In contrast to individuals like Desmond de Shum, who mainly serve as proxies for the one family only, Xu Jiaying's hunger and greed seem more pronounced. Desmond de Shum has expressed serious concerns, stating clearly during an interview with American media earlier this year that Xu Jiaying's assets and even his life are in jeopardy. This is a very frightening situation. Regarding the fate of the 1.62 million unfinished housing units, the government has already initiated actions in certain areas. For example, in Beihai Guangxi province, the government's transportation investment entity has assumed control of a significant Evergrande project due to its favorable location and solid planning. This suggests a resolution for the Beihai predicament. In other regions, local governments will adhere to the unified directives of the Chinese Communist Party to take charge of Evergrande projects. However, for specific Evergrande ventures characterized by inadequate planning, unfavorable locations, complex debt, and financially challenged local administrations, the situation is more complicated and may entail a protracted process. Nevertheless, once government control is established, measures to stabilize the situation will likely be pursued, albeit with the ultimate cost borne by the general public. Therefore, it is crucial not to underestimate the gravity of the situation. Hence, in the ongoing development of the Evergrande crisis, the recent arrest of Xu Jiaying marks just the beginning of this crisis, and it is evident that the situation is far from its resolution. We should remain attentive and await further unfolding events. Thank you for watching. Please leave a comment and subscribe to my channel. Just click the subscribe button right here. I'll see you again shortly. Until then, be well.